Welcome friends, I'm Pia Lee and I run a very vibrant Agile community named Discuss Agile Network where professionals from across the globe connect and learn from each other. And today I have something very special to share with you. Sometime before I met uh, Maria Mattarelli. Many of you might have already heard this name. She is a certified scrum trainer, a certified agile marketing trainer, and a DJ as well. And above all these, Maria is a fantabulous human being. I attended a program, two days a CAMS program uh, conducted by Maria in Bengaluru. It was indeed a great experience. I have shared my experience uh, on my blog which is available on social media. If you just want to have a look on that, just search with hashtag Discuss Agile. You can have that blog. And uh, today, Maria is present with us here to share lot more about Agile marketing. Now, I won't take further time of yours and I would request Maria to take this show forward. Maria, over to you. Thank you, Piali. It's exciting to be here, and I'm really excited to share more about Agile marketing with everyone. So Agile marketing is an approach where you know, many of you may be familiar with Agile, you may be familiar with Scrum, and one of the things that we often hear is that Scrum helps you do twice the work in half the time. And when we think about this concept, and we think about product development, you think about uh, being able to launch products or apps or anything in the software development realm, well, why can't we get twice the results in half the time with how we market our product? What if we were looking at full-end business agility from product creation to launch? So that's what we're really talking about here, is we want to talk about how can we get twice the results in half the time? What about half the budget? Uh, how can we apply these agile concepts to now get our product out there, create awareness with our ideal customers. So Agile marketing really helps us to focus on the customer relationships that carry the most value and also adopting an iterative process for fast results and sustainable growth. So what we want to do here is focus on the types of customers that are going to really need our product rather than us trying to just figure out who we can sell to. And then if we use that iterative approach where we test a small chunk of, of something. We have an idea, a campaign. Uh, so just how in developing a product or a software, we could create something and put it out there to get feedback, we want to do the same thing in shorter campaigns in how we market. We also want to organize our marketing into channels of filtering, educating, and active selling. So we want to have different ways of interacting with people and not just be trying to get them to buy our product as the first time we contact them. Because we want to build that relationship and nurture that relationship as we go. And then also creating the systems and messaging to find and nurture your ideal customers. So what we want to do here is figure out how can we bring our ideal customers along that journey. So as we're getting feedback on our product that we're developing, what if we were also getting feedback on people's interest in purchasing the product and how they would like to engage with you as a company? So when we start to think about this Agile approach and adopt an Agile mindset in how we work, that's going to help us be Agile really from end to end in the business, not just in creating the product, but in actually taking it to market. A little bit more about my background. My name is Maria Mattarelli, and I'm a certified Scrum trainer and also a co-founder of the Agile Marketing Academy. My background was actually marketing as, as a major in college, and I always found it fascinating because I felt like marketing could really help you. Those skills could apply to anything, whether it's building a brand, if you're looking at your career, if you're looking at really interacting with people, and better understanding how to communicate or share your message, I thought, you know, not only was it fascinating to think about how people respond to messages, but also could be a very valuable skill. 
So after several years of being a project manager and then stepping in to be a scrum master, I discovered Agile and really felt like it was a better way to work. And then when I started managing projects, I went on this big long path about you know product development, IT, software development. And now it's really interesting and exciting to loop all the way back around to now incorporate Agile applied to marketing. So really taking the two concepts and putting them together. So what is it that companies want? Well, most organizations have a goal of reaching true agility because, well, they want to get to market faster. And it's not just that. If you look at the industry, if you look at just the way that new technologies are emerging, new apps are coming out that are completely redefining industries, companies can't really afford to wait anymore. They really need to be able to be more responsive and be more agile in how they operate. So you know, to be agile, to really be agile, you kind of need a little bit more than just your IT department to be agile. Because if you're developing products more effectively, but then everything just kind of stops and you then go into a traditional marketing cycle, we're now not getting the most benefit that we possibly could. Over the last several years, I've had the opportunity to work with companies all over the world. So from you know United States, from Europe and Asia, South America, and just really getting an insight into what are people thinking? How are they operating? But really, what are their biggest challenges? And it's interesting to hear that a lot of companies across a variety of industries across a variety of different locations, all have very similar challenges. And it's not anything that's that surprising, really. But you know, it's, it's interesting to see those commonalities. You may be familiar with the version one state of Agile survey that they do every year. And one of the questions that they always ask is, why do companies adopt Agile? And the reasons are you know, quite a few that, that rise to the top. And of those, one of the biggest reasons is accelerating product delivery, needing to get to market faster, and then also improving business and IT alignment. And when you look at these reasons, this is something that we can help with when we start to apply Agile to marketing and then how we get the product out there. So the need that companies have is a real one to not just develop products faster, but then also get them out into the marketplace. There's many different Agile approaches that you may be familiar with. And one of the things that uh, we realize is that we can actually borrow different techniques from di different approaches. So some of the, the common approaches from Scrum, Extreme Programming, Kanban, you know, these are techniques that teams are just finding a more effective way to work because the results speak for themselves. So as we look at, hey, how can we start to apply these in other departments, the, the common sense really gets carried forward. And, and I say common sense because in business we tend to sometimes overcomplicate things. We may be working on something and we're following a process that may have been in place for you know, 10, 15, 20 years. And sometimes we need to get back to the basics and looking at, well, what's really the point here? What are we trying to accomplish? And are we doing things that really make sense? There's a company that we began working with a few years ago. And one of the things that we saw is that they were looking to grow, looking to expand, and over the course of a year, this was a trend of their growth. Now, if you look at these numbers, it might not look too bad. You know, would you be happy with this kind of growth? Well, yeah, there's a huge spike up. It, it dips down a little bit, but it has a, an overall trend up. So, yeah, that's not too terrible. But when you look at this in the context of really thinking about long-term growth or long-term longevity, it actually, we found a plateau here. It appears that the product launched, but we may not have really connected with the real ideal client base because as we're trying to reach out to these customers and expand, 
You know, we've hit this level. So when you back out and look at the bigger picture, yeah, it was sort of trending upward, but that's not really the type of growth that, that most companies want, nor is it the type of growth or limit that most companies can afford these days. One of the things that we started to do was apply these agile concepts to how this company marketed, and we saw incredible growth. In fact, there was over 300% growth in six months and more than 780% growth in a year. And as soon as we saw this, we were like, oh my goodness, there's got to be something here. Like, what did we just stumble upon? Who knew? Like, a lot of companies are using Agile in their software teams or technology department because they want to have that rapid, massive increase in productivity. And wow, if we can get that in our sales, get that in our marketing, that could be huge. Now imagine if you're developing products twice as fast in half the time, and now imagine if we're marketing these things that much more effectively and getting that much more growth and that much increased speed to market, right there is a huge, just huge competitive advantage in the marketplace. I want to take a moment and jump into a little bit more detail about this specific case study with this company that we worked with. Now, this company sells acid-free coffee. Now, how many of you are coffee drinkers? Uh, or do you know a coffee drinker? And if you answered yes, or if you know somebody who does, I'm curious, you know, how do you feel without your morning coffee? And you know, those people around you, if they don't get their morning coffee, how pleasant are they to be around? So sometimes, uh, you know, it can kind of change your whole day. I know some people that they're a completely different person without their coffee. They just need that cup of coffee to get going. Now, imagine for a moment that you or this friend of yours has been told that you cannot drink coffee anymore because you have a physical ailment. Now, how would that go over? Maybe not too well. So what we found was this company was trying to market by saying, hey, guys, here's some healthier coffee for you. It has no acid, so you can be healthier. And if you look out at different trends that we're seeing and how people are marketing different food options available, there is a bit of a trend out there in the marketplace for people to be healthier, or, you know, eat gluten-free or, you know, those types of things. But the question really comes down to, you know, if you're having this blanket statement of, hey, you could be a little bit healthier, I, you know, is that really going to pull in new clients? Is that enough? And I'm wondering if it is, because you know it might not be. And in fact, we saw that it isn't really enough because the company numbers were plateauing. So what we said was, let's really look at getting a lot deeper into you know, what's the problem we're trying to solve? Who really needs our product? So when we started asking these different questions, what we found is that we could really connect with the right kinds of people and the people that truly needed our product. So for example, uh, somebody that has a physical ailment and is told you can't drink coffee because of the acid, it'll, it'll hurt your stomach or you know, your body's not going to respond properly. You know, what we found was a lot of these people had very high stress jobs, which you know, maybe that's what led to the drinking of coffee in the first place, to, you know, trying to get through the day, get up early, get started. And, you know, most of these people did not like being told they couldn't have their coffee. So a lot of them would just still drink the coffee and have pain. Now, when we would introduce the concept of a healthier acid-free coffee to people that could now drink the coffee and not feel that pain, that's a real customer that truly needs the product. So what we did was we started by writing user stories around who needed our product, uh, you know, what exactly they needed and why, what was the real benefit for them. And we ran different campaigns, very short campaigns, to really connect with that type of customer or persona. So we had this hypothesis and we said, let's think about, you know, people that might have, say, colitis, Crohn's, ulcers, pylori, or 
what we were doing before was just a free sample with sign up. And we started putting these offers out there online. Now, as you look at this diagram, you can see that the response we got was not equal across all of these short campaigns that we ran. In fact, uh, campaign number three was targeting people that had ulcers. And that response was through the roof. So when you look at all of these different campaigns, my question to you is, where would you put your marketing dollars? And would you even mess with the other marketing campaigns? If you get more than 7,000 responses of interest from one ad, why wouldn't you just put all of your effort right there? That's more than 600% more of a response than anything else that you tried. Now, in a traditional marketing campaign, if it's a longer campaign cycle, where you build out, you know, here's what it's going to be, let's launch it, let's let it run for a month, three months. We could be just wasting marketing dollars by not knowing that true interest. So when you can start to really get this feedback in short iterative cycles, what that's going to do is allow us to target and hone in on those customers that truly need our product and that our messaging really resonates with. With Agile marketing, the approach we really want is to be light, fast, and flexible. Because we're going to be learning stuff every day. The market is changing every day. New apps and competitors are being launched every day. So we need to work in a different way, in a different way than we used to. And that's where applying the Agile approach to marketing becomes so much more effective. Now, when we look at this approach, we wanted to use a very simple Agile methodology or framework to wrap around this Agile marketing approach. And what we did is we were working with Alistair Coburn, one of the original creators of the Agile Manifesto, and his heart of Agile approach, which can be simplified down to de collaborate, deliver, reflect, and improve. So when you look at Agile today, and you look at companies trying to scale, a lot of companies, it seems, are starting to overcomplicate some of these concepts. And one of the things that Alistair has been talking about in the last couple of years is how can we get back to the basics? Agile was supposed to be simple. It was supposed to be lightweight. It wasn't supposed to come with an inch or two inch thick document that you have to pour over and apply. So how can we get back to the, the core elements of Agile and just apply these simple steps to collaborate, deliver, reflect, and improve. So as we start to apply this in the marketing sense, we want to collaborate in a couple different ways. We want to work in a more collaborative way as a team, rather than just having one person responsible for putting together the creative or you know, putting out a campaign out there. And we also want to collaborate with our customers. We want to get real feedback, and we want to start to apply that feedback as soon as we possibly can. So that means we need to have shorter cycles in what we're doing. We need to consider beta groups. We need to consider how can we get immediate feedback or collaborate with our customers on what types of messaging resonates with them. As we're delivering, we want to put something out there that we can get immediate response on. Now, you can apply this approach offline, but one of the reasons that it's being applied online really well is because you get instant feedback. You can instantly see number of views, number of clicks. We have instant data all being collected in a heartbeat, in an instant. So as we deliver our campaign, one of the biggest differences is we want to do something that's going to be shorter. We want to do something that uh, we can put out there and quickly measure the engagement or response and then decide if we want to continue or make any changes. And then we also want to reflect. So take a moment specifically out to you know, take a step back and look at what, what's the effectiveness of this campaign. What's working? And then from there, we can improve. We can make very specific changes that will help us to hone in on 
what could be a better message? One of the clients that we were working with about a year and a half ago, uh, we started talking to them and they did a lot of marketing. In fact, they did radio advertising, they did TV advertising, they had online marketing campaigns. So they put a lot of effort and budget into creating awareness about their product and service. So one of the things that I asked was, you know, how much are you spending on these different avenues of marketing and then what's the return for that? Or what's your cost of customer acquisition? For every dollar you spend, you know, how many dollars do you have to spend to get a customer? And the response I got just for radio advertising alone was that they were spending 14,000 US dollars per month and they had no idea what the return was. They had no idea what that that cost of customer acquisition was. They didn't know where the customers were coming from, whether it was from the radio, from the television, from online. They just weren't tracking it. Now, when you think about that, and then you think about what they were probably spending on TV advertising and then the online marketing, I mean, gosh, there's got to be large chunks of wasted dollars out there. So if we're not doing short campaigns and if we can't measure them, you know, how can we improve? We don't know. We're shooting blind. So when we go to launch a specific campaign, we're going to go through this same cycle as well. So in how we work in developing the campaigns, we're going to go through the cycle. But then as we have a very specific targeted campaign, we're going to constantly be revisiting it and reflecting and looking at how to improve. And we're going to be constantly gathering data for making informed empirical decisions. So when you look at the campaign and we look at where to begin, this is where we start applying some other agile techniques in how we market. So you may be familiar with the concept of the user story that's often used to identify what features need to be created from a user's perspective. And in marketing, we still use the same framework as a I need so that, but what we're really focusing on here is, you know, who is that ideal customer? What is our specific solution or what specific feature do we want to highlight? And what problems does this make go away? So when you think about, you know, who you're trying to really target and connect with and what it is that you're offering and how you can help make their problems go away, if you start to use this framing for interchanging different who's, different why's, maybe different specific what's about your solution, now we can do short, quick tests to see if that even resonated. So it's a way for us to really focus and hone in on you know, what messaging is really going to create that message to market match. Some questions that we really want to ask is, you know, where are our customers? Who are our customers? What are they doing? And what are the things that they like? And we can really break this down to you know, location, behaviors, interests, and demographics and start to think about the different, uh, different qualities, the different things that make this avatar of a customer unique. Now, when you see these questions or you see these, these words here, does that remind you of any online platforms? Think about that for a moment. Think about social media. Think about Facebook. Facebook has so much incredible data. At, in fact, they have people that are regularly checking in, tagging their location. Here's where I am. Uh, you have people that are you know, liking certain items, have certain interests. You have people that are attending certain events that are making certain purchases, having certain behaviors. And you have certain people that, you know, you, you have all of the information on what age range, what, you know, people that have a certain type of job, uh, what types of, you know, things have you been involved with in the past. And you look at all the demographic information, we can get very specific in how we market to people and how we target them. So it's a lot more of an advantage than 
before people could market on the internet. A lot more of an advantage before there was Facebook, where everybody just put all of their personal information right out there on the internet to tell you exactly what they like, where they go, and essentially how to reach them. I'd like to take a moment and introduce a concept to you that really gets back to the mindset shift that we need to have with Agile. So many of you may be aware of you know, some Agile concepts like the definition of done and identifying, you know, what does it mean to be done? And I'd like to introduce you to the done manifesto. So you may be familiar with the Agile manifesto. There's even an Agile marketing manifesto that was created several years ago by a group of very intelligent people. I was so thrilled when I found it online. I was like, wow, I agree with everything on here. These are excellent points and you know, really different values and different ways of thinking. So when you think about the mindset that it takes to work in an agile way, I really like the done manifesto that I hadn't really heard of before. And it really applies to a lot of things and makes a lot of sense. So first item here is there are three states of being, not knowing, action, and completion. So if we can be aware that you know some things we just don't know, or we could be in a state of action where, hey, let me do something. So we don't have to be right when we start. We just need to do something so that we can now prove if something works or not. So we can go from not knowing to knowing by taking action. And then completion. If you're not done with something, then well, you don't really know, you know, did it work, did it not work? You know, it's still pending, just kind of looming there. So we really want to be aware of these different states. And what we can pull from that is that if you don't know something, you know, take an action, complete it, and now you know something. Even if it's not the answer you hoped for, even if it's not something that you, know, you, you thought it was going to be, at least you know whether it was or was not. Also, we would accept that everything is a draft because this helps to get things done. So don't try to be perfect. Just assume, hey, everything's a draft. We could always make it better. But what's that minimal increment that we could do now? This applies to how you work. It absolutely also applies in how you market. There is no editing stage. Okay, let's just do, do or do not, right? This is one of my favorites, and I've actually applied this, and it, I think it really worked. So pretending that you know what you're doing is almost the same as knowing what you are doing. So just accept that you know what you're doing, even if you don't, and do it. So that's really interesting, right? So if you're pretending to know what you're doing, or if you know what you're doing, your actions are going to be pretty similar. So if you're doing something, whether you feel confident or not, you can still complete the task, right? So why not just accept the fact that you know what you're doing because you are kind of doing it, and just proceed. Just do it. Don't second guess yourself. Don't try to overcomplicate things. Just do it, and then see hey, did I learn something? Because the only way that you're going to learn or be better is to, to get that experience, right? The only way we're going to know more if our marketing campaign was successful is if we actually run it and see if it's effective. So don't spend time worrying about whether you're doing something right. Take action to do it, and that's going to really help you to just start to to realize stuff, to uncover those types of things. So as we look at the Done Manifesto, these are really concepts that can carry us forward. Uh, next one is banish procrastination. If you wait more than a week to get an idea done, abandon it. Now, that's a bit harsh and you know, kind of severe, but if you think about it, uh, you know, how many times have you thought about doing something but you haven't done it, and it just kind of sits there. And if it's just kind of sitting there, if you think about it, is it going to, if, if it's been a week, is it A, going to get done, 
but also if you think about it, is it detracting, distracting you or detracting your efforts because you're now focusing some energy toward it? So this gets back to the concept of limiting work in progress. And you may be familiar from the, with this concept from you know, working in an agile way. If you can limit the work you have in progress, that can help us to focus and focus more effectively. But if we have a bunch of stuff that we're thinking about doing, that can distract us because it can start to be overwhelming or it can start to weigh on us. Now, the next one is the point of being done is not to finish but to get other things done. So, you know, what is this concept of finishing or truly finally being done with something? You know, what if we're just working toward being better? Are we ever really done with things? So, let's just focus on productivity, actually getting results, getting an output. Once you're done, you can throw it away. Laugh at perfection. It's boring and keeps you from being done. People without dirty hands are wrong. Doing something makes you right. Now, this one is really interesting because what it's saying is, you know, if people haven't actually put their, the work in themselves or done anything, how can they prove a theory or a hypothesis? So if you have someone that's saying, oh, you shouldn't do that or you, you can't do that or I wouldn't recommend that, if they haven't actually done it, well, that's not, that doesn't say anything. That doesn't really prove anything. So we want empirical data to reference. So if you're doing something, you're right because you're learning. You're learning what works or what doesn't work. So don't listen to people that haven't been there or haven't tried it if you haven't tried it yourself, right? Next, we have failure counts as done, and so do mistakes. Now, this one is nice because you know, it's a little bit contrary to what we often think and you know, our mindset on stuff. But if you think about it, you know, even if you fail, you should have learned something. So if you learn something, you got something done, and you know how not to do it. And that's OK. So don't think of that as a bad thing. This really is a mindset shift. Also, destruction is a variant of done. If you have an idea and publish it on the internet, that counts as a ghost of done. That one's fun. So, you know, if you have an idea, just put it out there. Um, there's a marketing guy that we've been working with lately, and one of his concepts is, hey, if you have an idea, just blog about it. Just put it out there. Don't just, you know, talk about it. Like, like have this be like a small increment of something being done, right? So, you know, just start to continuously put small chunks of information out, and then you're slowly building more and more content every single day. Also, note that done is the engine of more. So as you get stuff done, that starts to build momentum. This is why a lot of people see value in using Scrum, because it breaks things down into manageable pieces. And as you start to work on smaller things and get them completed, it starts to, one, build our confidence, two, it starts to also help us get into that rhythm and that cadence of finishing things. I always get a lot done when I'm procrastinating on something, so I'll like do like 10 other things that I was putting off because I didn't want to do this other thing that arose that you know, I didn't want to do as much. You know, things like going to the gym or if you have a, a presentation or, or an article that you're writing that, that's due, it's like, oh, well, I don't know if I want to work on that right now, but let me do these 10 other things. But as you start to get little things done, it can now build up that momentum and make it easier to finish the other thing that you were trying to do. So the done manifesto, I feel like it's a really nice thing that we can reference as we start to think differently. And we start to think differently about how can we get things incrementally completed and work in a more agile way. We also want to be constantly gathering data. So if you look at you know, increase in revenue, look at what have you been doing, what is working, what's not working. The chart on the top left is actually down to the penny a monthly revenue chart of my company as I was trying to figure out this whole business concept and figure out, okay, how do I launch and grow a business? Now, notice that the lines went down to zero a couple times because right before that 
vertical growth in revenue, that huge spike, which is absolutely incredible, it took a lot of experimentation. It took a lot of uncomfortable moments and decisions. It took some guessing. It took being wrong. It took failing, literally trying things that just didn't work. And then finally, trying and stumbling around until, hey, wait a minute, here's the thing. Now, it also took really focusing down on a niche, really getting specific on what is it that you know, you're trying to offer, who's that real audience, and what is that message to market match? Because if you think about it, when you try to be everything to everybody, sometimes you don't be, end up being anything to anyone. And a case in point would be with the coffee company. They're just trying to say, hey, you can be healthier, you can be healthier, but people aren't just going to switch their habits to be just a little bit healthier. People aren't going to just, oh, hey, I've been you know, buying the same brand for 10 years, but let me just try this because you know, I might live a year longer or I might be slightly healthier in some in unmeasurable way. So we have to get very specific and that's what applying the Agile approach in the user story can help us to do. And then as we do these short tests to gauge interest, as you can see in the chart on the right, that can help us to really focus on that 80-20 rule. The 80-20 rule, it really applies in a lot of different ways where 20% of the effort gets 80% of the results. If you look it up on Wikipedia, you'll see that you know, most of the wealth in the world is held by 20% of the population. If you look at companies, 20% of the people in a sales department are usually responsible for 80% of the sales or the revenue. 20% of your clients or customers are probably responsible for 80% of your revenue. And what's interesting is that if you could just step back out of whatever you're doing every day, rushing around with that busy schedule, and if you could just step back and look at the bigger picture and realize you can work smarter, not harder. So that growth, that massive 600% increase of interest of people that had ulcers and truly needed acid-free coffee, why don't we put all of our efforts toward them? Because that's a market that this resonates with. And that's who we want to uncover as we do these short iterative tests. Now, on the bottom left, you can see this chart here. This is where we actually had to pause the ads multiple times as we were selling the coffee because we ran out of inventory multiple times. Now, this is what I like to call a luxury problem. It's a problem, but is it really a problem? I mean, it's a good problem to have. And, you know, I've heard the, the phrase before, uh, some people will say, you know, in life, you can't get rid of your problems, but I try to, like, uptrade my problems for a better set of problems, right? Like, what are better problems? Not trying to make it paycheck to paycheck, but, you know, what am I going to do? You know, where am I going to live? How am I going to deal with this environment? Which job am I going to take? You know, when you think of that abundance mindset and when you think about, hey, you know, what is it that I'm trying to do here? When we can trade in our problems for better quality problems, you know, these are problems that other people wish they had, right? So when we had to pause the ads because we ran out of inventory, we were like, holy crap. Like, I guess that's what happens when you focus on the right customers with the right messaging and you have over 600% interest from that specific target audience. So those are good problems to have. But what we really want to do is get the data that can help us make the right decisions. And that means we have to step back. We have to take a moment to pause and reflect. Because if we don't reflect, it's hard to improve. Because usually we're running around doing the same thing and we're caught in that rhythm or those patterns and you have to interrupt and break that pattern. So with the reflection, the questions that you may be familiar with in retrospecting is looking at you know, what went well and also looking at what could be better. So really taking time to stop and reflect on you know, what types of things aren't working, and then notice things that might not be working. What are things you, know, you want to stop doing? And, you know, what really could be enhanced or could be better? Why not just make that change?
So when you break it down, we really want to look at how we can improve what we're doing, or if it's working, use it, or lose it. So if you have a campaign that's effective, but it could be maybe more effective, hey, let's look for ways that we can improve. Or you know what, if we had a great response and it's not broken, let's not fix it. Let's just use it. But you know, if something's not working, at what point do you call it, hey, this isn't going to work? And if you ever watch the TV show Shark Tank, uh, get a kick out of Mr. Wonderful, Kevin O'Leary, and he says, you, know, you need to take this idea out back behind the barn and shoot it. Like, put the idea out of its misery. Like, stop wasting money or stop throwing away your time, energy, effort, money on trying to make an idea work that there is not a response from the marketplace. If it's been a year, two years, and it hasn't taken off, if you've tried different things, you know, at what point is it not working? At what point do you make that realization? So we can improve things. We could keep them going as they are if they are working, but we need to make that call sometimes. You know, what campaign is just a waste? You know, can you not find customers on the radio? Can you not find customers through a specific channel? Is it a waste to, to do certain types of promotions? You know, we want to analyze that data and make that decision and work smarter. One of the things that differentiates Agile marketing from a traditional online funnel is we really look at building this from the middle out. Now, what is a marketing funnel, you might wonder? Well, if you've ever been uh, you know, online and you see an ad or something that says, hey, free webinar, or get this uh, free article or free top five tips on how to do this, and you click on it, you then you know, fill out your name and email, get a free registration for the webinar, and they send you that free packet or article or whatever, uh, you've just fallen into a funnel. So what happens now that they have your email? Well, that company is probably going to send you emails uh, promoting you know, certain products or reminding you of the webinar. Then on the webinar, they're going to invite you to something else. And as they do this, they're moving you through these steps to fill filter out who are the people that are interested in really you know, connecting with our product or service and becoming a customer. So as we look at these users that are online, let's use an internet example, uh, we want to you know, create active customers. So we need to filter these people. So we're also going to educate them and then create the offer instead of just jumping to active selling. So you might have a landing page that you create. And we're going to take into account the location, demographics, interests, and behaviors. And we're going to be constantly iterating as we capture people, retarget them, do a drip campaign, sending out multiple messages, give them something for free of value like a lead magnet, and then repeat the cycle. And we're going to go through this cycle to create purchase or qualified leads. So we want purchases from these people, or we want a qualified lead that we can continue to nurture until they're ready to make that purchase. So we're not just going to you know, capture and you know, be starting to bring these people into our funnel and then you know, sending them information. We're going to constantly be iterating and getting feedback and refining the demographics, the location, the interests, the behaviors in a cycle to make sure that we have the right offer for the right people. And we really want that message that's going to resonate with the audience. As you look at the Agile marketing approach that is integrated with the Heart of Agile by Alistair Coburn, we're going to collaborate around creating these user, user stories. And as we build our funnel and deliver a targeted campaign, we're going to iterate through that campaign. We're then going to review the data as we reflect, and we're going to make changes to improve. So we're going to split test things. We're going to try something. Hey, let's use a video to promote our product. Hey, let's just try in some different text. Hey, let's invite them to a live webinar. Hey, let's just send them some information. You know, we're going to do these constant iterations to see what is the most effective way to truly connect with these people. And that's at the core of this agile marketing approach. So as we went through that case study, uh, working with the coffee company, we started to, to see these incredible results. And we then launched a case study program. From there, we started to look at what are the common factors 
that are getting results. And that is the curriculum that we put together under the Agile Marketing Academy. So what's interesting is that there's pockets of people applying Agile to marketing. There's some people talking about it if you Google it online. However, there's a lot of theory out there. And one of the things that we've done is we've empirically discovered what works. We have actually pulled in people that have specialized in marketing and advertising for decades and gotten real raw feedback into how Agile really can fit and connect with that marketing approach rather than just taking the Agile concepts and setting them on top of marketing like a cookie cutter approach. We really customized and looked at what are the real things that are working that we can continue to apply. So as you think about Agile applied to marketing, you know, know that Agile can be applied in a variety of different ways. Agile is being used outside of IT everywhere. You have Scrum and hardware. You know, Joe Justice is building cars using Scrum. It's incredible. You have Agile being applied in HR, in sales. It's being applied to just about anything because the core concepts really are effective. But when you apply Agile to marketing, one of the reasons as we looked at Agile outside of IT that we wanted to jump into marketing is that's where the revenue comes in. That is tied directly to results, and that's exciting. So what we really want to do is explore how can we be more effective in applying Agile throughout the entire business from end to end. And that's what a lot of companies are talking about these days is true business agility. So I'd like to take a moment and share some resources on how you can learn more about Agile marketing. Uh, if you enjoyed this presentation, we'd love to hear your feedback. And one of the things that we had talked about was uh, just an opportunity to learn more. And Payali had attended our conference and uh, training class in Bangalore, India last year, just a couple months ago. And she put together a wonderful write-up that talks about you know, the journey to Agile Marketing. So we have this Certified Agile Marketing Specialist course that we put together, and it really pulls together the core things that you need to know when applying Agile to marketing to be effective. And we have people from a variety of different countries, from the US, from the Netherlands, from multiple different cities in India, and what we did was walk through actually building an Agile marketing campaign in the classroom. And what's exciting about this is the feedback is incredible. And people are starting to just see the results. So I want to really encourage you to check out this write-up and check out you know, what are some of the people saying that are exploring this topic in more detail. Also, we have a class coming up that I'd love to share with you and invite you to attend. So we'll be holding another class in March, in just a couple of months here, in Delhi, India. And this is going to be something that's open to anyone. Uh, you don't have to have specific uh, level of understanding or knowledge on Agile or marketing to, to enter and join us. In fact, we often get a lot of people with just an Agile background that don't know a lot about marketing. But sometimes there's Agile coaches or trainers or people that are consultants that want to be able to add this to their skill set. Or maybe you're working in a company and you just want to understand Agile that could be applied to different departments and be uh, more knowledgeable and have more expertise on it. Uh, we also have people that come from the marketing side that don't have a lot of Agile experience. And they want to understand you know, how can these techniques help us be more effective in how we work. So we'll go ahead and we'll share this link. Uh, Payali, if you could put the link in the chat window for people. Yes, yes. Uh, you can find out more details. Uh, you can find out more details about the class. Uh, you can contact us for any more questions. And we would absolutely love to invite you to join us in this movement. Because Agile applied to marketing is becoming bigger and bigger every day. More and more people are talking about it. People have the title of Agile Marketing Specialist on LinkedIn. We're seeing this happen. So we are so excited about just the incredible results that we've seen applying Agile to marketing and also just the opportunity to help businesses be more agile 
and have true business agility from end to end. So thank you so much for joining us today as we talk about Agile Marketing. And let's go ahead and open up the floor for questions. Yes, uh, I'm getting a few questions here. I'm assigning them to you, Maria. All right, checking out the questions that we have here. So the question here is, marketing cycles would not be short like IT project cycles. So how are Agile, you know, applying Agile in sprints, how is that possible? So when you think about marketing and when you think about, you know, the cycle that you go through, um, we think that it's not a short cycle. We think you have to build the campaign. You have to build the messaging. You have to create the, you know, media that you're going to use. Um, we have to put all of this together and then launch the campaign and then get the results. We have to create the commercial to put out. And that's probably what a lot of people also thought in software development. If you think back to 2001, uh, one of the books that I read early on was Agile Software Development with Scrum by Ken Schwaber and Mike Beadle. And when you look at this book, it's a really great read that I recommend because they really talk about what was the state of the industry back in 2001 where you had these companies that had multi-million projects, multi-million do dollar projects, and they had multiple years of sunk costs that they'd been working, and they had absolutely nothing to show for it. They literally would spend millions of dollars over a couple of years and have no working software, no working product to show for it. And I would almost guarantee you that that same question was asked about applying Agile to software development. People would say, but how can you use these short cycles and these things called sprints when we have to, you know, it takes years to develop a working piece of soft software. And, you know, there was a group of people that came together and said, no, we challenge that thinking. You can do it shorter. So yeah, traditional marketing campaigns are probably more lengthy cycles. You know, if you're going to launch a, a video or or commercial, yeah, it takes a lot to put together the script and to get the actors and to shoot the video and to edit it. But my question to you is to challenge your thinking and think back to that done manifesto. What could you do now that you could put out there and then you could get some feedback on? Then you could get some kind of response. So what we did with the coffee company is we were doing those long campaigns, which was, hey, get a free sample. Hey, this makes you healthier. And it wasn't working. It worked to an extent, but then they plateaued. And so what we did was we literally did two-day tests, week-long tests. And we would say, okay, what's the response if we just put out an ad, a short boosted post on Facebook? If we target these people with these interests and this demographic, with this messaging, with this photo, you know, are we going to get a response? So you could do these short tests in a week, in two weeks, in a couple of days, and then at least know if your messaging is even on point. So just like we did with the coffee company, we, could, we saw very quickly people that have ulcers, that's who we should make an ad for. So what if you did those short tests before you wrote the commercial? What if you then wrote the commercial that was targeting people that had physical pain and that had suffered from ulcers? Have you ever seen insurance commercials or advertisements on the radio where uh, they're talking about a very specific uh, pharmaceutical drug that might have had bad side effects. And they're pretty much putting on a commercial that's just saying, have you ever used this drug or been prescribed by a doctor and had these side effects? You may be entitled to royalties or payments. And that's a very specific message. I've often thought when I see those commercials, like, that's so random. Like, who's going to have experienced that? But the reason that they're doing those very targeted commercials is because it's working, because they're getting responses from people. and. There's people out there that don't even know that, that they could actually be awarded money for you know, being harmed. And so that's what those attorneys have figured out. They're actually applying some of these concepts. So yeah, it might seem like, hey, how can we apply these concepts because you know, agile, you know, marketing cycles are so long. Well, yeah, but development cycles used to be very, very long. So this is where we really want to challenge our thinking and think differently about you know, what could be. What could we try, and what could we do in a week or a couple of days just to get a response and see what that interest was? So it really is a different way of thinking. All right, I got another question here. 
What is the benefit for having the course knowledge or certification for technical guys? You know, this is an excellent question. And I get asked about certifications a lot because I train a lot of certifications. So people are always asking, you know, what's the benefit of a certification? Should I go for this? Should I not? So well, I do a lot of the scrum training. And, you know, sometimes people will ask about, you know, traditional project management or PMP. Or they'll say, you know, I'm a certified scrum master. Should I become a certified scrum product owner? Certified Scrum Practitioner, what, you know, what's the, the point of that one, the professional one? Um, what is, you know, PMI Agile Certified Practitioner? What's the point of this? You know, there's so many certifications out there. Why do I need this? How can this apply to me? So the answer that I always give people is, well, that depends on what are your goals. So, you know, why could this benefit you? Well, what are your goals? If you are in the product owner role, this could help you. Having an, a better understanding of how people respond to your product or the features that you're thinking about, these techniques could help you to gauge that interest much sooner. Also, if you're a team member, if you're a technical guy, you, know, you may not have interest in marketing. That's possible. You might say, you know what, I just like to work on the features. That's what I really enjoy, and that's what I want to focus on. So maybe this isn't the right fit for you. However, if you're a technical guy, and you want to get that promotion, or you want to maybe look for advancing in your career, this could be a great avenue for that. So if you're looking at, you know, how do I apply Agile to marketing, and if you know these concepts of how you can do these quick tests to gauge interest, imagine if you're getting feedback from customers about the features you're developing, and you're able to bridge that gap and give that information to your marketing department at work. Imagine how knowledgeable you could be. Imagine how, about how you could stand apart from all the other developers around you because you understand not just how to create the features, but you also understand the concept of full-end business agility. You understand how to think about how customers look at the product and what that feature really is going to mean for the customer. You can ask those curious questions and say, you know, what if we were to gauge the interest from customers on if these are the features that they want? What if we don't just develop a bunch of features, you know, sitting over here in our, our silo as, as a company? And what if we started to look at ways to engage our customers? These are things that all set you apart from the other people around you. And for those that may want to get into coaching or agile coaching, uh, some might say it's a saturated market these days. That a, there's a lot of people that go to a scrum class and call themselves a coach, and, you know, there's a lot of people saying that they can do that. Well, if you understand Agile not just apply to development, but also apply to marketing. That helps you see the bigger picture at the business and enterprise level. So now this is another skill set in your tool belt where you can show that you can more effectively be a coach for that organization because you understand how Agile applies across multiple departments. So what's the value in the certification? Well, it's a third party validated Cert certificate or accreditation that shows that you understand these concepts, that you have taken the time and prioritized learning, and that you have been able to show competence in this topic. So the reason that we launched the Agile Marketing Academy is we wanted to make this a, a third party, you know, industry, worldwide, uh, applicable entity that people could align with. So I have my own consulting company, but I felt like if we only did Agile marketing at my, my company, it couldn't be this big worldwide movement. And we want to make this huge. We want to invite people across a variety of industries to become certified Agile marketing specialists, become coaches, become trainers, uh, become practitioners. So we really want to help the, the movement and build upon that. So you know, what could be the value for someone that's technical or a developer in learning Agile marketing or getting certified? It's just something that helps you to better understand full-end business agility, and it helps set you apart from everyone else around you because you're going to have a more experience and a deeper level of skill set. So it might not be right for everybody, but it might be right for you if you're wanting to do something different or really expand on your skill set and your knowledge. Excellent question. All right, another question we have here. Do we have sprint in Agile marketing? If so, is two weeks feasible as marketing involves a lot of preparation? Excellent question. We borrow techniques from 
Scrum, from Kanban, from Extreme Programming. Uh, just a couple off the top. Uh, you know, with Scrum, we definitely do apply several of those concepts. You know, the retrospective, the daily stand-up. Uh, from Kanban, the visual board, the task board. From Extreme Programming, that's where user stories come from. The concept of involving the customer in a very high capacity. Uh, so we do borrow things from all you know, several different Agile approaches. Um, the sprint cycle is key, and the reason is that time box helps us to validate something. And one of the things that we do in the training class is we actually map out an um, Agile marketing campaign. And we actually map out the funnel and build it as a visual collaborative approach. So imagine you have all the different pieces of your marketing campaign that you're writing on post-it notes and you're moving them around on the wall. Now, to create a nice, beautiful campaign, that could take a month or two or three. But it's back to the core Agile concepts. What could you do in a week? What could you do in two weeks? So yes, just like in Scrum, we take that same concept of the time box and the sprint, and we say, you know, we want to challenge you to release something or work in that iterative and incremental way because we can still get value and learnings from doing that incremental launch approach. So I want to thank everyone for all the questions that you had a chance to ask. And I wanted to thank Payali for inviting me to present. It was absolutely wonderful having you in the class just a few months ago. And we're so excited to be able to bring this class back to India again this year. I also wanted to ask if you had any other questions or comments uh, that you wanted to share from your experience on Agile marketing in the class. Yes, uh, Maria, uh, like uh, we already have a few more questions from our participants. Uh, but uh, I will assign one last question to you and uh, then we will wrap up the Q&A session. Rest of the questions, we can take it offline. So I'm just uh, assigning one last question to you. Okay, wonderful. Yeah, it's really exciting to see all of the interest that's springing up around Agile and marketing. And I think part of the reason is over the last year or so, scaling has become a huge, huge topic. I mean, we're seeing different scaling frameworks that are taking over. And a lot of people are finding that they're so complex that they may not be seeing immediate effectiveness. So what we found is if we can go department specific and go marketing specific and speak their language, that's one way that we can expand and scale Agile throughout a company and it can be a much more effective way in some cases. All right, so we've got a, another comment or question here. Great session, Maria. The case study involved a product-based company with the same work for a service-based company marketing. Excellent question. Uh, thank you so much, Payali, for bringing that one up and make sure we get that one in. Yes, it yeah, I, I a great did, question. Yeah, I did talk about a product example, um, but another, another client that we had in our case study program was a dentist. And a dentist has services. Now, dentists may also have products, but what was really interesting is as we were talking to this dentist, um, he initially was a bit skeptical because he thought, I don't think that I can apply um, this concept to my business because he uses Medicare, or the, the customers use Medicare. So in order for people that qualify for Medicare to use a service, he's like, I can't find my customers on Facebook by doing advertisements on Facebook or by using you know, online marketing like that. And what was really interesting is we actually, in his first campaign, he sold over $35,000 of what he was offering. Now, that's incredible. So over $35,000, like, I mean, who wouldn't want to invest a couple of hundred dollars in marketing expenses and get tens of thousands of US dollars back? And so what we learned by this is that we have assumptions that might be holding us back. And they might be holding us back from trying things from you know, trying something that we're afraid might fail. So we've actually seen this work with services. Uh, we use this approach in how we work as well as a company. And you know, we do training, which is a service. We um, do consulting, right? That's a service. And the Agile marketing approach still works with services and products because when you think about it, it's looking at how do you connect with the customer? What are the benefits that make their problems go away? 
And one of the first things that we do in the training class is we really take a lot of time dissecting the problem we're trying to solve and the value of the solution. And what we almost always find is that people try to list benefits for the problem. Well, what's the problem we're trying to solve? Oh, well, this helps you do this. No, that's a benefit. So what Agile Marketing helps you do is really get down to those 15 crucial questions on what's the real problem. And when you can figure out the problem, then we can get so much better at resonating with our audience and really connecting with them on that problem and then showing the value of the solution. And that's when the sale makes itself. So yes, this absolutely applies to services, products, because it's in the, the methodology, it's in the approach, it's in the framework, right? And it can be applied across a variety of industries. So thank you so much, everyone, for all of the great questions. Thank you for hanging around through this webinar. And I uh, just want to invite Payali to share with us, is there anything else you'd like to share about your experience in the class or what you've learned about Agile Marketing? Yes, uh, it was a great experience, Maria. I might have been practicing a few of these things, uh, marketing things already, but these two days of class changed a lot of things. It changed the way of looking at things. It changed the way of perspective. And uh, I really realized a few things about myself. There were a few wow moments, which uh, one of which I will uh, absolutely share. You uh, taught us, don't focus on your product's benefits always. Rather, you should focus on what all problems of the client you are going to solve by your product. That was a really wow moment for me from those two days. Even I have mentioned that in my blog as well. That was really a wow moment for me. Awesome, awesome. Yeah, it's incredible to, and you know, we get so close to our work that we forget to step back and look at things from that bigger perspective. So, you know, really in summary, what we, the biggest problems we've seen Agile Marketing help with has been, uh, you know, companies have had two main challenges in how they run their marketing. And one is they don't have that true message to market match. And so exactly what you mentioned, when we can focus on the problem and really hone in on that, we can get the right messaging that resonates with them so that they, you know, we find those people that need our solution. And then also people would have very long campaign cycles. And these are the things that Agile Marketing at its core really just help to fix. So you know, thank you everyone for joining us. It's been such a pleasure. Uh, we'll share the links in the follow-up email on uh, reading the blog that where Ali is sharing her experience and then also uh, if you'd like to join us in Delhi, India, would absolutely love to see you there in March. So uh, it's been an exciting time sharing with everyone this morning on Agile Marketing. And if there are any follow-up questions, please feel free to reach out, and we'd be happy to get back to you. So thank you, everyone. Yeah. Thanks, thanks Maria, for sharing your insights with us. I know it's uh, like morning time at your place. You might have just started the day. So Yes. <laughs> so have a great day ahead and uh, for our friends who have uh, joined this session there were few questions which uh, we were not able to answer to them I would request to you please tweet the question just uh, tag Maria her Twitter handle is Maria Matarelli use hashtag discuss agile and tag Maria in that questions she will surely get back to you just tweet that your sounds question. great and as Maria said, she will be here in India during uh, March. March 23rd and 24th is uh, her session in Delhi. We have this program uh, published in our website as well. Uh, if you go to eisenbridge.com and the event calendar, you can have all the details about the program. I would like to invite everyone to come to this uh, class. I can assure you it will be a great experience for your life. And uh, thanks, Maria. Thanks uh, once again for this time. Thanks for joining us. Yes, thank you. Now I'm closing the session. Thanks all for joining.